Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Leal and today we're going to be taking a look at the Arch Support and Nexus. For those of you that are unaware, we are running this thing now, which is called the Arch Support Nexus, where you can submit your own files and I'm going to be able to help you out and troubleshoot any issues that you might have. We, we had some um, submissions already and today we're going to be focusing on this one right here, which is from Gabriel Flores Gonzalez a fellow Mexican artist from Guadalajara here in, in Mexico. So he's telling me about uh, this um, this uh, like scene that he's working on, his first portfolio scene, and it's a really nice room. It's uh, Rooms are great ways to, to start your, your 3D portfolio. There's a lot of stuff. There's like cloth and like props and stuff. And um, I added this slide because it, it was only the scene. I didn't have any of the textures or anything. And he's having issues with the normal maps and the displaced map. So we're going to take a look at that. Now, this is the render that I get from the... Um, from his uh, scene right now. Uh, a lot of the elements have this wireframe shader, which is fine, but I'm just gonna grab all of this, guys. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna assign um, just a very basic Lambert material. There we go. So if we render now, we should see this more like a, like a clay render. We're gonna see like nicer and softer shadows. And so look at this, this looks really, really nice. I'm sure this is gonna be a great piece, but let's take a look at why the textures or where we're having some issues with the textures. So this is the substance file that Gabriel uh, submitted and it's a really nice texture, my friend. I, I gotta say, you have a really nice like eye for details, like colors and stuff. It, this looks really nice. I'm sure that as long as you can keep this level of detail with all of the other elements, you're gonna have a great, great result. Um, I'm, I'm guessing you want to get this sort of like displacement effect going from the from the carpet inside of Maya. We're going to take a look at that. But to do that, I need to explain to you guys, and that's the title of the video, the custom exporting options here inside of um, inside of Substance Painter. So as you can see right here, we have all of these different materials. One of these materials is one for each of the uh, of the different objects. So of course we need to select all of them. And by default here on the output template, we can find this thing called the Arnold AI standard. Okay, that's the basic one. Otherwise, you can find this one up here, Arnold AI standard. And this is the one that we normally use. However, there's one interesting thing about this map, and I want to I wanna go into the nitty gritty stuff of this thing. But before we do that, before we jump into this, I just want to remind you guys that we have all of this information not only available here in YouTube, but also in all of our premium courses. So if you want to learn a lot more about Substance Painter, make sure to check skill. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just want to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. There we go. So this right here, my friends, this is the secret to exporting maps inside of uh, Substance Painter. The output templates are all of the different templates that you normally get for all of the different engines, Unreal, Unity, stuff like that. But you can also create your own stuff. In order to know or in order to get the most out of these exports, we need to understand how they work. So let's go to the Arnold AI standard and take a look at what's happening here. As you can see, we have all of these elements right here, and we get the different types of formats that we're exporting when we export an object. So for instance, right here, we have the flag for the mesh. So it's the name of the mesh, the main, the name of the material, the texture set, and then this is the base color. And as you can see, this is exporting an RGB material, which is what we want. By default, it's PNG, 8 bits, that's perfectly fine. Then we have metalness, and this is important. It is a PNG, but it's only exporting one channel. As you can see, it's a grayscale material. So you're only going to get one channel. If you try opening this in Photoshop, you're going to see that you don't have the RGB channels. It's just a single channel. Same thing for the roughness. And then the normal map, you can see we have the alpha channel as well, and we have an RGB. That's why we need PNGs, because some of these maps are going to need an alpha channel, and you cannot get an alpha channel with a normal JPEG or stuff like that. Now, here's the important thing, the height map. The height map is the map that we use to modify the position of the vertex in the object at render time, right? And usually this is more than enough, a PNG at 16 bits, but if you want to get the most out of this, I recommend changing this to an EXR and changing this to a 32-bit float. This is going to get you the best uh, like result, the best depth and the best information for your, for your displacement. And you're going to get, well, a really nice result. So you can do this right here on the Arnold AI standard. And as you can see, if I go to this side right here, the list of exports, you're going to see that now, uh, if we update this, there we go. We should get now a, an EXR for the height information. I believe we should get one. Did we save? Maybe I didn't save. 
But yeah, so by changing this EXR32 uh, bits of float, uh, we're going to get the best possible result. Now, sometimes when you're in a studio, they will ask you to export other stuff. For instance, a mask or let's say like the ambient occlusion, right? Like for instance, we're not exporting ambient occlusion right here. You can create your own map. For instance, I'm going to create here an R plus G plus B map, which has three channels, as you can see right here. I'm going to call this like costume, right? So if I want to use the same flags, I can just like literally copy them. I'm going to copy this flags right here. And it's going to be the name of the mesh and the name of the texture set. I'm going to call this my... Uh, ambient occlusion, let's export like curvature and let's export uh, like a thickness. So ACT, I'm going to call it. And what you can do now is just you can just grab any of this map right here and input it in any of these elements. For instance, in this case, uh, from the ambient occlusion, I want to get the gray channel. There we go. From the curvature, I also want to get the gray channel. And from the thickness, I want to get the gray channel as well. So now when I export this map right here, this ACT, it's a new map, right, that I created, I'm going to get a, a texture file that's going to have all of this information. Sometimes I've seen students that like to get like the information from the IOR or scattering and stuff like that. Well, all of the inputs and mesh maps that you have right here, you can input them into different elements. Just be careful about the type of information that you're getting. For instance, I cannot get the normal map information into one of these guys because as you can see, we're not going to be extracting the normal map information. The normal map is a three channel information. So for that one, I will need an RGB slot right here. You can just plug this in right there and just copy the RGB channel. So now this is a like normal, normal, normal map uh, channel. Sometimes uh, something that's very common as well when you're working with Unity or other softwares, they like the DirectX or the OpenGL normal map. So you can set up your own custom element. I actually have some custom stuff right here as well. So yeah, this is the, the, the main thing about this. Now that we're ready, let's say we're ready and we want to export all of this. You can see we have this rog in mochila uh, underscore 1001 base color rog in mochila underscore 002. Okay, so we have Udem, um, a, a Udem information right here. Let's see if this works. I'm going to open the output directory and I'm going to export this to my NT Live. Create a new folder here called uh, Nexus. There we go. Let's copy this information right here. So on the settings, the output directory is going to be this Nexus file. There we go. So we select our Arnold AI standard. We select our, our formats and stuff. Again, it should update to the new one, but let's give it a shot right here. And we just export. It's going to go through all of the different maps, all of the different exports that we need, all of the different, uh, like, yeah, maps, information. And uh, once this is done, we can jump into Maya. And I'm going to show you how to very, very, very quickly like connect all of this because otherwise it's going to take a long, long time. Now, these are 4K maps, so you guys are going to see that this is going to be a lot of space. I'll show you exactly how much space this is once this uh, finishes. See? Seems like uh, we got it already. There we go. So we have all of these maps right here. And if we take a look, look at this. It's almost half a gigabyte of information, 543 megabytes. But we have all of the maps that we need, the roughness, the base color, the height, and everything. What I'm, I'm uh, wondering now, I'm going to close this. We don't need this anymore. Uh, let's save. I'm going to jump into Maya. And what I'm wondering is if this element right here, the school bag, the sleeping bag, the helmet... Like, I'm wondering if these guys are actually laid out in the proper, like, uh, in the proper, like, proportion with, with Udems. Let's take a look. So, that's the rug. Um, then, what else? Here, I would just strongly recommend you, my friend, to, to clean stuff up a little bit so that it's a little bit easier to, to find. There we go. This guy and this guy, this guy. So I'm just going to check the UVs and see if they're... Okay, perfect. They're laid out perfectly fine. So we need to create one material that's going to like grab all of these elements so that we can properly get them to work. And we're going to be using the Substance plugin that we have here. And there's this one called Apply Workflow to Maps. Let me make sure that I have this turned on. This is the new Maya, so sometimes some of these plugins are not turned on. So yeah, there we go. So load it. And auto load for all of these plugins. I always use them. So there we go. So apply workflow to maps. We select multiple maps. We go to our uh, the place where we found our stuff. 
and we select the base color, the height, the metalness, the normal, and the roughness, and we hit select. You should get this, like they should immediately find where they're supposed to go, which as you can see, it's working perfectly right here. But if it doesn't, you're gonna have to go to each individual element and select them yourself and hit apply. And what this will do, if we go to the hyper shade, is it will create the whole connections for every single element, okay? Now, the interesting thing about this, here we go, we got, uh, uh, has to be this one right here, the new AI standard, there we go. So this AI standard surface five is the new one. I'm gonna call this like Udem matte, just to know that this is the Udem material. So uh, this is the one, it, all, it already has all of the connections, even the displacement map connections right here. So you can see the displacement is working. However, displacement is really interesting because depending on, on the displacement, you need to change a couple of settings inside of your objects. So for instance, the rug, if we want to displace some of the rug information, we need to go to the rug shape right here, go to Arnold and activate this thing called subdivision. We need to give it a Catmut Clark subdivision level and tell it how many times we want to divide it at render time, let's say four. So this thing will smooth four times at render time, and then it will push and pull all of the different elements to where it is supposed to, to go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna delete this lights right now. I know you placed them, but we're not gonna use them today. And I'm gonna grab all of these elements, right click and assign the existing material that you didn't met. So some objects in this case, well actually in this case, none of the objects are gonna look good. And the reason why this is not like working properly is because the UDIMs are not working properly. It's not finding exactly where the UDIMs are. So we need to do a little bit of calibration here. We need to go, let's go to the to the color, which is probably the most obvious one. And we need to change the UB tiling mode to UDIM Mari. And as you can see, it will find automatically all the tiles. If you wanna preview them, I would suggest going to low quality and generate the preview so that we can actually see the, the colors a little bit better. There we go. So the magazine is working nice. It seems like some of these guys are not sharing the proper UBs. I'm a little bit concerned about that. Yeah, see this one right here? This one's not where it's supposed to be. This one is, this one's not, this one's not, and this one is not. So I'm just gonna grab this whole shell right here. Oh, let's get this out, this one out. And there's a couple of tools that we can use here. So the transform tools, we can just like move this whole thing one tile up and that should solve that one. I wish I could show you guys both of my screens at the same time. It would be a lot easier. <laughs> um, there we go. So that one, select the UV shell. That one goes one tile up as well. We can grab the roll here. seems like we're not on the proper, like a UDIM tile for this roll. Uh, it seems to be this one right here. Yeah, so so here, my friend, we need to be very careful. If you're if you're trying to like reuse assets and stuff, you need to be very careful because it seems like the UVs from this objects that I'm seeing right here are not actually matching the the UVs from from your uh, UDIM tile here, like this one right here. I'm not even sure where this one's supposed to be. Is it like the blue color? Yeah, no. So as you can see, the, the colors are not matching. So be very careful about where you place your UDIM tiles. I'm not sure if you if you did the UDIM thing on purpose or not. If you didn't, you're going to have to do the same connections that I'm doing like one by one. Uh, but if you did, then um, you got to be very careful about where you place your stuff. So let's go to the rug. I just want to make sure that the rug has its its proper UV because that one was uh, the one with the displacement that we were using. So it's this thing right here. Yeah, the rug seems to be on its proper position. You can see it right here because of the of the texture. Okay, cool. So the rug is on its on its proper position. It, it did find the, the proper UDIM tile. So the the other thing that we need to do, especially for the height information, is here on the um, on the little like uh, icon on the hyper shade. We need to make sure that all of the textures that we are using point to the proper uh, direction. I'm not sure why this is so slow today. I mean, the, the scene is a little bit heavy. So normal map, we look for the UDIMs. We don't need to generate uh, tiles or anything. Hide map, very important. We need to find the UDIMs. There we go. Roughness map, we need to find the UDIMs. And then the metalness, we need to find the UDIMs. There we go. So with this done, 
all of the UDEM tiles should be reading uh, properly. Let's multiply divide is fine. We don't really need it. And uh, yeah, we're ready to, to do a, a nice like test right here. So I'm going to save this real quick before anything bad happens. And then now we can take a look at the render. So let me grab one of the cameras that I created over here, panels, click to select it. Oh, we're already in the, in the camera. And I want to focus, of course, on the, on the rock, which is the, the important part regarding displacement. Now, you don't need displacement all the time. That's another thing that I would like to, to point out here. You don't need displacement all the time. Um, only if the silhouette is going to change like really, really heavily, would I suggest using displacement. Otherwise, a normal map is more than enough for, for this type of elements. So let's give this a, a shot. Let's wait for this to render. We're getting a lot of errors right here. And the errors that we're getting are all of them regarding uh, displacement. This is why I don't recommend using displacement. We don't need it because what's trying to do, it's, it's trying to displace a lot of the things from the... Um, from the elements as well, like the backpack and the roll and everything. And it's just not finding enough like information and stuff to do it. So I'm gonna pause real quick, wait for the render to finish and I'll show you guys the result. There we go. So here's the render. And as you can see, my friend, we're actually pushing. You can see how that's the silhouette of the rug is pushing and creating a lot more detail than what we normally uh, normal need. We're also getting a little bit of that here on the rug and on the backpack and everything. This is definitely gonna increase your render times and the performance, but you're gonna get a nice result. So First thing I'm noticing here is the sampling is way too low. We're getting a lot of noise. Yes, we can use the denoiser, but the denoiser is just going to make it a little bit uh, like muddy. So I'm going to go to the render settings over here on a render. I'm going to turn on adaptive sampling. I'm going to lower this to like eight. Eight is usually a good number for, for the test that I've done. It's definitely going to take a little bit longer. You can see right here, I am using GPU to make this a little bit like faster. Um, but you can see we get a, a, a nice result. Now, once you have something like this, you still need to tweak things. Like it's not like you're you're done, especially with displacement map. It's always important that you tweak things to get like even better results. What do I mean by this? Well, first thing we can do is we can go to the material itself, again on the hyper shade, and we can play around with how intense we want that displacement to be. It should be it should be properly calibrated to get you the same sort of like effect that you were getting inside of uh, inside of Substance Painter. But if it doesn't, you might need to either punch it up or bring it down directly here on the displacement shader node. So here the scale, if we bring it down, let's try like a five, for instance, and we compare. Save that image. You're gonna see that this thing really, really, really bloop pushes the, the vertices up and creates a lot of texture. This might be something that you want. If you're doing like a stony texture or something, it might be something that you want. But you can also see how it's breaking everything else, like the cloth right here. This is because every single object is not calibrated properly. In this particular case, what I would probably recommend is if you want to use displacement for the rock, do it as a separate material so that it doesn't impact any of the other materials that don't really need displacement, like the backpack and the helmet and everything else, okay? Now, uh, of course, if this is way too much, and it is, we can bring it down to like a 0.25, for instance, like really, really low. And uh, you're going to get a, a nicer, softer result. Because if you if you remember this one right here, it looks like really inflated and, and it's giving, giving us a really like weird effect. And usually you just want a little bit of, uh, of, of detail right there, maybe like a 0.5 or something. Um, and that's going to give us a, a more interesting effect for the whole thing. So um, that's what I would suggest for, for this particular carpet right here. Now, I'm going to do one thing here. Let me turn on this option, which is... There we go. So... I'm going to grab all of the objects again, except for the carpet. I'm going to assign them the Lambert uh, material back because it's it's not looking good. And here's what I would do. So now, even though this is a UDIM material, we're not really using it as UDIM. We're only using the, the rock material, right? And uh, since it's not affecting anything else, we can actually play around with some elements that we have with this particular material to get an even better effect. For instance, we can go to the sheen option the sheen is this sort of like um, like glossy effect that we can get on top of the element, and it's going to give us a really, really nice effect here. Let me show you. So if we increase the sheen right now, you can see it. Uh, cloth tends to do that. You can see a little bit here on my shirt where, where the fussiness of the cloth will give us this type of uh, effect. So I'm going to increase the sheen here and make it really rough, and then I'm going to bring it back. So what this sheen can do, as you can see right there, 
is it can give us this sort of like fabric-y, clothy look. It's like like velvet. Um, I'm going to say it in Spanish. So it's easier to understand. It's este tipo de como aterciopelado que buscamos. Entonces, ciertos elementos, certain elements will have this sort of like uh, like velvet look where, where the light will bounce around the surface in a certain way. And instead of looking like flat, this kind of looks like a like a hamburger meat or something, it'll look a little bit softer, like cloth. So you might want to add a little bit of this sort of like sheen look to every single element. Again, you can see the comparison here, no sheen, and then a little bit of sheen right there. It's going to make it look a little bit more fabric. -y. If you want to go really, really the extra mile after you do this, the next thing that you will need to do will be to add a little bit of uh, hair to it, like, like fabric and stuff. Now you have a really cool concept here with the whole, uh, with the whole room. So I I'm guessing you're probably going to do like a full render, something like, like this at the end for your, for your portfolio piece. And if you're going to do something like this, then yeah, you don't really need to add like fibers to the rock because it's, it's, it's just too much. Right. Um, but just keep it in mind, if you want to go like the extra mile with the, with the realism, then adding that sort of stuff might be a good idea. Um, make sure to, again, fix your u my friend, because you do have a really, really nice texture inside of Substance, Substance Painter. So make sure to check and, and change your u to get the, the best result and uh, follow all of the steps that I just showed you so that you can get an amazing render out of this piece. And for everyone else, if you guys want to uh, submit your portfolio for portfolio review, the submissions are now open. You can find the information down here. You can also submit your work like uh, what my good friend here uh, did, and uh, I'm going to be happy to review it as well. And let me know in the comments, what else should we cover? We're going to be back on Monday with more of our live stream. We're going to continue a little bit with retopology. I know I promise we're going to be finished with it, but I've been so busy with the premium course. So we're going to continue with that. And uh, yeah, more stuff. Let me know in the comments what else you guys want to see. And I'll be happy to do that for you here in the channel. Make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe. We're really close to 40,000 subscribers. We just passed the 35,000 mark a couple of days ago. Thank you very much to everyone for your support. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.